Okay, all right, thank you everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, this is a session on augmented reality, bringing education to life. Uh, my name is Brad Wade and this is Drew Manock. Hello everybody, thank you for joining us. So today what we're going to do is, uh, an hour is really short for us. Uh, we like to talk, we like to demo, we have a lot of cool things to show you. We're gonna show you a lot in augmented reality today in education, how it impacts students today and how it impacts uh, consumers and jobs today and tomorrow. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, mentioning there are a lot of jobs that don't exist yet that students are going to be uh, in, in industries, okay? So a lot of this technology is going to impact not us not only right now, but into the future as well. Absolutely, so if you go to the FETC uh, mobile site, where all the sessions, everything are at, and you click on this session, you'll see a link in there, okay? And it's where you can enter and do, depending on it, there's a whole list of things that you can do once you log into that, that get you points, that enter you in our giveaway. And we have a ton of stuff up here. Almost, this table will borderline be empty at the end, because we're gonna be giving it all away to you guys. Yes. Okay? So we have the Color Alive coloring books that are new from Crayola up here. We've got, the famous daiquiri cubes. Yep. Black we have and white. coasters. We have enchantium packs. We have a ton of stuff. All kinds of stuff. And so basically, what Drew was saying said, if you want to increase your chances on the raffle, you go to a link, and then it's like getting ping pong balls for the NBA lottery, like the draft. Okay, that's kind of what it is. The more things you do, the more tweets you do, and things like that. And we want you tweeting today. If that's something you do, tweet, Instagram, whatever. We're going to put contact information up here. We'd like to see that. Maybe break Twitter, whatever. Let's at least get something going today. You like what you see, take pictures. You like what we're saying, take pictures, share it with your personal learning network. For people who are not here, there are plenty of people who are following the hashtag that cannot be here in other states and all around the world. So please, you're actually helping them by sharing this information out. And here's some of the information. At the top, you'll see our Twitter handles. I'm at Tech Manock, and then Brad is at Tech Brad Wade. The Two Guys Show, which is our podcast, Daiquiri Education, you have our email addresses and our blog, and then the hashtag FETC, okay? So if you guys want to snap a quick picture of that, we'll leave that up there for a couple minutes. What we're going to do is we'll talk about some of the things, um, some ways that people are using it in education, because a lot of times with augmented reality, everyone's like, wow, it's awesome, right? But how do I use it in education? How does it actually have an impact on kids or how kids are learning? And how are they actually going to use it in the real world? Okay? Believe it or not, augmented reality is not just all gimmicky things. Okay? It is actually the future of learning. It's the future of the way that we interact and the future of work. Okay? And if you were paying attention or you saw the, the link, uh, the announcement yesterday from Microsoft, they actually now have glasses that create holograms. Okay? So that's pretty exciting. It's just a new announcement that just happened yesterday. So this, it's not that it's coming. It's not an if or when. It is now, and it is happening. And these things are being created. And it completely transforms the way that we learn. So and what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to bring you along a continuum today. Okay, because every one of you are on a, on a continuum with your teaching. Okay, so we're going to show you a lot of the technology, and we're hoping that there is something you will take away today and be like, I get it, I understand now. This is what I can do with my students. And this is where we're going. Okay, this picture right here to us says it all. All right, and this is what we're gonna focus on today. We're gonna focus on the power of augmented reality. You have a kid here, he's got a stack of books, he's got his paper, he's got his markers, and he just wants to rip his hair out, right? Then you have a kid with one book with the content popping out of the page, coming to life with augmented reality, okay? And this is so true, because when you use augmented reality with learning, whether it is 3D models, animations, or it's simple video on a page, it is like magic to them. And it instantly captures them and engages them and gives them a whole new way to learn, okay? So why do we use it? That says it all. It ignites mind-blowing engagement. This is an actual picture that someone tweeted to us for the first time that this kid saw <laughs> augmented reality. I mean, does that not say it all? We were, last year, right as we, we, school was over, went to a conference in Indiana. We were doing something just like this. And the person who's taking a picture was a person in a room just like this. They went home, this was his sister and his nephew. Went home, and I love it because he had the idea, you know what, I wanna capture this. 
because his nephew had no idea what he was about to see. So what you don't see is he's seeing the human body. This is anatomy 4D. So what he did is loaded the app. His sister is scanning the target and the anatomy. The human body came up. Okay, and his nephew is seeing this. This is a genuine reaction. He tweeted this to us after the conference. So we've been using it ever since because this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. And if you can get this kind of engagement, we call it the Midas touch. You can get any learning outcome you want out of it. If you want a kid to write, you hook them like this, you ask them to write. You need a kid to present, you hook them with something like this, you say, hey Tommy, I'd love for you to share that with the class. So you can get all kinds of learning outcomes once you have the engagement using these kind of tools. So think about that. So you might be saying, well, this doesn't necessarily pertain to me, but if it's something that captures your student, then you can have whatever learning outcome you need to accomplish. Because once you have them, you can do other things. I think there's something really, really important that we often forget. Okay? We're so wrapped up in, I have to get this standard done. I have to get this click or whatever, right? Common core. And you focus on that. Your job isn't to teach somebody how to do multiplication. It's not to teach them how to write an essay. Your job is to teach them to love learning. Okay? That's so important. Because if we crush that love of learning, it does not matter what standard you need to get. Okay? Because if they do not have any passion to learn it, then it's just not going to work. Very important. So what is augmented reality? And we both love movies, so we like to use movie examples to kind of try and explain it. Okay? How many people have seen Harry Potter? Well, I really have. Oh, there's got to be more people that saw Harry Potter than that. I Come haven't on. Seen it. Right? I haven't seen it. Yeah, see? They so do. Did we. You awesome. know what? Okay. I haven't seen I it. I dragged been, him there last year. We've been year. doing this for a long time, and every time it comes up, I've never seen the movie. Drew goes, I'm going to get you to yeah. the park. So we were in Orlando a few months ago, and we went to the park. So I've, I've seen it. I've had the experience now. Went on all the rides and left sick. We did. We left. We, we got the fast awesome. pass, double fast pass, VIP, all that. We went to every ride, and two and a half hours later, we were like, we couldn't even walk. We're like, man, I've been on everything. So, so think of being a student at Hogwarts, and you're walking down the hall. Those pictures that are on the wall, they're not just pictures. Okay? They're interactive. They're alive. That's augmented reality. It takes that stagnant 2D image and it brings it to life, makes it interactive. Night at the Museum, how many people have seen that? I've seen that one. Right? Night at the Night museum. museum. Oh, yeah, it's good. You should see it. <laughs> yeah, check it out. There's a couple of them. So during the day, just regular museum exhibits, right? But at night, they come to life. Same type of thing. You can take those stagnant exhibits and bring them to life. Okay, and it creates a whole new way of learning. So I'll tell you just quickly, I'm going to give you the short version of what, where augmented reality came from. It is a technology that was developed by the military about 15 years ago. Okay, the military was faced with the problem of soldiers being in harm's way. And they needed to solve this problem. They looked to technology to solve this. What they did is they had soldiers in uh, the desert in tanks that would break down. Well, these soldiers were vulnerable, and that's a problem for the military, for anybody. So what they'd have to do is they would sit, and they'd have to call for a maintenance user to have to come up and repair a tank. So what they says, what if we have something, what if we can develop something that would give us information and overlay digital information and tell somebody how to do something? So what happened is, the example I've seen is, you know, the tread on a tank that spins around, right? Well, that broke. And so a soldier went and got this. We would use iPads today. That's where the technology went. They put on this helmet and this device that was, had a computer uh, program in it. They put it on, and it's image recognition software. That's what augmented reality is. Augmented reality is using a device and looking at something. And when it understands what it's looking at, like a target or whatever, then it says, oh, I recognize that. Now I'm going to run a program. Okay, so what happened out in the field was the soldier put on this, this helmet with the visors and looked at the tank. Well, the computer said, I know that's a tank. I know what I'm looking at. Oh, the tread's broken. So now what it did is it, just like an Iron Man or Avengers or whatever, uh, Minority Report, for some of you remember that, all of a sudden you have the digital overlay right over top of it. And it showed the soldier where to go to get this, to get a crowbar, go put it, push it up 90 degrees. So he had a holographic overlay showing the soldier exactly what to do. Now, the soldier was not trained on how to repair things in a tank, but he was an able-bodied person that, with directions, could accomplish the task. So now, that's where it came from. After the military discovered, started using it, perfecting the technology, the industry, industrial markets, started using it. Then, just a few years ago, advertising and marketing started using it. 
Sometimes now, so like if you look, there are serial boxes that are augmented, there's movie posters. You know, now you can scan a movie poster and like Wolverine will come to life. Okay? Be in the education section, we tend to be one of the last ones to find things. But we started finding this, and when Drew and I found this about two and a half years ago, there were really very few things in education. One of the first things we found was the human anatomy, which was created for uh, University of Illinois Medical School. I saw that, brought it into my students. I'm like, this is cool, I want to try it. And I saw something I had really hadn't seen to that depth. I saw the engagement and just in their eyes. You know when you're working with students, you know when you have a great lesson plan, something goes great, and you're like, that was awesome. The students are engaged. You know, we saw this, and it was like, this is truly amazing. I said, I gotta, we gotta find everything we can. So Drew and I started finding everything we could in augmented reality, and then started talking with companies and started building things for education. And that's where our journey began, and that's why we're here now. Because we've been using this with kids. I've been teaching third grade and fifth grade for the last 15 years, and Drew's been teaching anywhere from kindergarten to fourth grade. Okay, so we've been doing this with our kids, truly. And we're talking true integration. We're not talking changing the common core. We're not talking changing your standards. We have to teach and deliver these things. What we're talking about is true integration with students. And that's what we're going to touch on as much as we can today in this short amount of time. And it's creating experiences, right? No one has an awesome experience and never tells anybody about it. It's when that kid sits there and does a worksheet for an hour that he doesn't tell anybody about it. Okay? If someone is going to have an awesome experience, whether it's in school or not, they need to go tell somebody about it. We were at Winter Park High School, right down the road, and I'll never forget this. Awesome. We ran into a student and he goes, oh, that's that augmented reality, that Daiquiri stuff. I, I took a picture of that and tweeted it out. When was the last time you heard a ninth grader take a picture of something he did at school and share it on social media? Think, think about that. Something he's actually learning. Never. <laughs> right? So what we're going to talk about today is some, some real ways that people, some meaningful integration. Okay, we're going to share just a couple examples. There are a lot more on our blog that um, many teachers around the country that we collaborated with helped create some uh, examples and ways that they were uh, using it. The first way is book reviews. And I'll let Brad explain that one, then I'll touch on the mini lessons. So book reviews, we bring this up because it's one of the easiest things. And it's one that can relate to, to most situations. Okay? So we st I started with my own library. So think about this. You know, when peers can review books, you know, we do book reports. How many of you have ever done standard book reports? Either yourself or with your students. We've done it all the time. So think about now taking it to the next level. Now having a student read a book and then do a book review for their peers. Well, here's the cool part, because now what we can do is we can have a student film another student talking about this book. I read Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel. The main character was, you know, so-and-so. They talked about the setting. Whatever you want them to do. And then they tie this video to the book cover. Using augmented reality, what we can do now is we can tell our device that when it scans this book cover, I want you to run this video. So now what we do is we have stars, and even in like in Winter Park, they have, uh, they have uh, little, little daiquiri logos on things, because that's what they've used to augment it. You open the app, you scan it, and all of a sudden you have a peer review from a student about the book. And that's a, just a very simple way that you can do it. Homework mini lessons. Does anyone in here use everyday math? I've got a couple. A couple? It's a very language-based math program, right? If you don't understand the vocabulary of the math lesson, a lot of times the, the students, they really struggle with it. Okay? So we were finding that in our class, that they really struggled with that, and they could have used that extra little boost at home. So after each daily lesson, you get a study link or a home link that goes home. Okay? So what we did is we used an app Explain Everything to create a short minute, minute and a half tutorial, little mini lesson, and tie it right to the, um, to the homework. So now when that student goes home, they use their device, open up the Daiquiri app, and boom, it literally looks like I'm writing on top of their homework assignment as I'm explaining how to do it. The funny thing about the vocabulary, it's different than when Brad was in elementary school long a time long ago. time ago. Long time ago. And when I was in elementary school. Like so five, for those parents, ago. they're trying to help that <laughs> they're trying to help that struggling student, right? But they're using completely different vocabulary for the same concept. It's just making the problem worse. It's causing that fight. Well, that's not the way my teacher taught it in class, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now right. they have me explaining it with the same exact vocabulary, with the same examples we used in class that day. 
Homework came back more often. When it came back more often, test scores go up. Now think about this. You know, there's Khan Academy, there's great tutorials. YouTube's a great tutorial for anything. Okay, so the thing is, is like, even myself, you need to know something, you need a tutorial, you go can get it on YouTube. But think about the personalized learning now, because now a student can go home, and it's made for that student for that lesson. And now a student, you know, we were dealing with eight, nine-year-olds, that student doesn't have to go to computer and do research and type in, you know, fractions and so on, and then see somebody else teach it. Now getting the absolute personalized learning, getting the teacher to go home and just scanning it, not having to go to computer, just taking out iPhone, device, Droid, whatever, scanning it, and boom, you get it. Need something, it's almost like the rewind button. You can play it again. Multiply yourself. We talk about a good friend of ours, Kevin Honeycutt, he talks about multiplying yourself. Okay, this is one of the great ways to multiply yourself. Okay, but don't, don't keep yourself hidden. Let's share this information. Absolutely. Community posters and ads. So the one on the left there is a, is a large poster that we created for our school district to help promote things about our district. School of choice is huge in Michigan, right? So you're always looking to compete in, in a way to stand out from other districts in the area, right? You hang these posters in Target when you walk into a school, whatever. Now when I go up to that poster and I scan each image of the school, it gives me a highlight video of that school with virtual buttons to touch that will call the school. Download applications to apply to go to that school. Whatever you need. Okay? So now I have information about every single one of those schools right there. And not only that, but again, it's all about that experience. It's a way of standing out because people remember things like that. And yep. I'll talk about what Drew did on this next one. This is just a little personal touch for our classroom. And then we're, there's a lot more of these on our blog. So like, these are just a few. If you go to twoguysandsomeipads.com, there's a whole list that Drew referenced earlier. So this is just to kind of get your minds going because we, what we hope you start doing is like, I've got an idea. Here's something I can do in my class. So what this one was, this was for open house. This was a little puzzle. It was a blank puzzle. And Drew gave it to all the students to color, which was cool. When his parent, their parents come in, this is on their desk. The parents have to put the puzzle together. That's already cute already, right? That's already cute. Aww. Well, here's what's really cool. Oh, I know, right? So what's, here's what's really cool. So parents would come in, they build the puzzle. Well, these puzzles were augmented. So the parents would get out their phone, scan it, and it's a video message. Hi, Mom and Dad, thanks for coming to Open House. I'm glad you made it. Oh, oh right? Oh, there we exactly. go. That's the reaction. We're That's what for. we're talking about. We're talking about true integration. We as teachers already do amazing things. That's why you're in this profession. You're here to make a difference in a child's life. We're not here to change the common core. We're here to deliver. We're help, here to inspire, help kids learn. This is how you can integrate. These are simple little things you can do to already enhance the awesomeness of what you're already doing. Okay, so these are just some ideas to kind of show you the power of using this technology. And this technology is not going anywhere. It's getting better. And what we're going to do now, all right, you guys ready for some demos? Yeah. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you a lot of stuff. And just take it, guys, because we're really, if you have it, how many of you have seen augmented reality firsthand? Oh, right on. Oh, we're pretty good. All right, so hopefully what we're going to do is we're going to show you some new stuff. We'll show you some things you may or may not have seen. We're going to try to cover everything from like pre-K all the way up to grade 12 and even higher education. And then again, there are so many more things that we're not going to have time to show. Please go and look at the blog and get information there because there's going to be something that works for you. We're going to touch on a few of our favorites, a lot of the highlights, and most everything we show you is free. I believe, I don't know if there's anything other than the coloring books that you pay for uh, by, from color, from Crayola. Uh, I think most everything is free. So, all right, you fired up, Drew? Oh, I'm all fired up. Oh, I know he's fired up. All right, let's, let's do some demos. Let's get ready. All right, woo! All right, so what are we doing first? Okay, the first one we're going to show you is early childhood. It's called AR Flashcards. Okay, and AR Flashcards has three apps out. There's the Letters, which is just the standard AR Flashcards app. Then there's AR Flashcards Space, and now there's AR Flashcards Shapes and Colors. Okay? The AR Flashcards, the one I'm going to show you first, is free, but the other ones, I, uh, they're $1.99 they're, they're $1 or $2.99. Maybe. These are great for early childhood. But they're also great for ESL students. Okay? So what this is, is I'm going to demo the dinosaurs, because dinosaurs right. are cool. So and my favorite one is the Velociraptor. What, what you have to know is, is you get six, six or eight dinosaurs with the alphabet. 
Drew really wants to show you the dinosaur. For, for sake of time, we're not going to show you the letters, but just know that just what you see with the dinosaurs, if you're looking at the letter A, an alligator would pop up, and you're going to get the same, of, same idea, but he's got to show this. Maybe. There Maybe, if Drew can work the connections. OK. There we go. So now, look at this. We have these 3D modeled animals, and I believe we've got audio. Do we, Drew? We do. Should. OK. So I'm going to do the Velociraptor because I just think it's adorable. This, they, what they did is they have it instantly, these, these early childhood kids, that, that kindergartner, that boy that run around like crazy as soon as you give them flashcards, right? But when you give them flashcards with this, He'll sit down and he'll go through them rapid fire for an hour straight. You know, seriously, little Tommy. we've seen it happen. Yeah, you know, little Tommy. ABC it was Brad when he was gone. little. That was me. I mean, anybody knows me. I can't stay on for too long. I'm like, all right, I'm done. I got to move on. Velociraptor. That's cute, right? Triceratops. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, I'm showing you the dinosaurs because I like dinosaurs, but it has a whole entire alphabet where it's A for alligator. So it's that letter recognition repeated over and over again, okay? And again, one of the cool things is it's not just about these cards. It's what you do with these cards. We've seen a lot of amazing blog posts, and people have gotten in touch with us about you know, letter centers, letter of the week, and all kinds of cool things that they're doing. So you like to put your own fingerprint on learning. This is a great way. These are just the beginning to get the engagement. We talked about the learning outcomes will come. If you have a student engaged, look at that, boom. Are you taking a picture? picture? Yep. Little, almost like a selfie almost. We'll do that later. Well, we actually have something that is selfie mode built into one of these, and we will do it, and we're going to tweet at the company, which we've done a couple times before, and they loved it. So we will do that. we got a great crowd today. So you guys want to do a selfie later? Yeah. yeah, right on. All right, what do we have next, Drew? Next, we're going to show you space, air flashcard space. So this one was the second app they came out with in each one of the planets in the solar system, and then they have a flashcard with the whole entire solar system. But Which it doesn't really cool. just do the planet. Okay, They actually give you a little bit more information You're that frozen. go with it. You're frozen. I get that a lot. He, yeah. It is cold. We're from Michigan. Michigan. Right? <laughs> all right. So, all right, when this gets fired up, I know why he's showing planets. The same students who did Velocawapta also did another one, which he loves. I do. I do, too. So, as you can see, you're gonna, when you print these out, you're going to obviously want to cut them, but for demo purposes, right. we like to have all four of them together on a page. Exactly. Okay? But I'm going to show you Jupiter because, again, it's my favorite one. Listen to this kid. Listen. This is just great. Jupiter. <laughs> all right? right? Let's give it up for him. Right on. I love it. I love it. That kid is the creator's son. He is. And he goes, honestly, we don't even care he didn't say it right. It was so cute, we had to keep it. I'm like, I 100% agree with you. Yep, this was made by a couple dads out of St. Louis. We have a question? Yes, it is. Oh, this is a couple dads made out of St. Louis, and they did this because they thought they wanted to do this for the kids. And then they realized, wow, there was really a need for this, and so they started creating this. And then when the education community uh, embraced it so strongly, they said, wow, let's do some more. Started as a passion project for their children. Yes, question? Not, not in this app. Not right now. They, we've talked to them, and they've talked about being able to do exactly that and to actually not use. You can use their 3D models, but create your own flashcards, too, that go with it. And you also get more information with this one. And there's something we'll show you at the very end where you can create your own, and you'll be able to Jupiter. do audio, video, and stuff like that. Jupiter so you will be able to. And we'll show you that near the end. The sun. And the largest in our solar system. Jupiter is a gas giant. And the best known feature of Jupiter is the Great Red Spot. A persistent anticyclonic storm that Big is word. larger than Earth. Did you know that? Right? I didn't know huh? it was anticyclonic. I kept saying cyclonic. I was apparently going in the wrong direction. It's perfect. So I learned something. All right, so let's check this out. We're going to NASA next? Yes. All right, so we're going to be going to NASA next. NASA is actually one of the pioneers in educational augmented reality. Um, they developed this app called Spacecraft 3D. So if you're looking up uh, apps, it's Spacecraft 3D by NASA. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. When it first came out, there were about seven or eight targets, and they were absolutely incredible because NASA did all the modeling. They did all the technical uh, capabilities and everything. It, then they started adding. There must be, what, probably 30 now. And what we're going to show you, what are you going to bring up, Drew? 
the, the Mars rover. How many of you remember Mars rovers going on Mars, right? It's curiosity. So check this out. Curiosity. And this actually is living in this three-dimensional space. If Drew wishes to get closer, he's simply going to move closer. If he wants to move back, he will move back. Now, the funny thing is, is the kids had to do this. It was real funny. I was working with my class. I'm like, hey, guys, watch this. If you want to move around it, you just moved around it. One of my students goes, I'm like, all right, all right. Funny enough, he's like, he didn't even say anything. I'm just like, all right, I got it. That was very smart, very smart, because I didn't have to move around anymore. Drop them up. Uh, so they see, Drew's going to, you want to press some of the buttons down below? You see that these are buttons that you can press. And now, like, he pressed the 90 degrees. So now he's moving this rover on the tabletop. Now, what I recommend, if you use this with students, you need to give them a little sandbox time at some point. Because they, you know what they start discovering? They start discovering they can put it on their head. They can put it on the wall. I looked at my camera roll on my iPads. I'm like, oh my god. But you know, the thing is, it made me laugh and made me smile. You know what? That's really another reason why we do this. Those kind of situations where I took a step back and I started looking at my camera. I'm like, there is absolutely nothing to be upset about that. So just be aware that when you're introducing some of this technology, you need to give them a few minutes so they can play, so they can get that out of your system. Once they do, then you've got them. You're like, all right, Tommy, you remember doing this? Here's what we're going to do. Again, learning outcome. If you want a report, you want a presentation, whatever it might be. Now, if you don't do space, obviously it would be something else. But you can kind of see the theme here, that once we have them, we can do whatever we need to for that child, for their learning. And a great thing about this app that a lot of that we really like to tell augmented reality companies is that there's one target, right? Mm -hmm. So I can put that one target in the middle of the table and have as many kids around it as I want to, all exploring something different. Yep. Okay. Think about that. That's pretty powerful. Yes. Question. Comment. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 That's that's actually a great question. Right now, all these apps, you have to actually go in, open their app. Even they all utilize your camera. They have to go through the app to translate it so it knows what it's looking at. Right, right now. Now, in the future, I'm pretty sure we're going to have like an augmented reality browser, an AR app, and most are going to code into that. It'll be just like opening a browser online. Okay? So it'd be, it's going to be going that way. But for now, you need to open up the specific app and fire it. Yes? There are Symbaloos, there are Pinterest boards yeah. out there. Um, we have one with, that's a combined a cl collaboration group mm -hmm. um, where there's a ton of stuff on there. Yeah. And we have, a, again, on our blog, we have a page called Augmented Reality that just has a list of a ton of stuff. Yeah, so they're, okay. they're out there. We try to, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of AR Come in a on. lot of different places. We try to bring it to one spot as best we can, but anything we put on there, we use. So we don't want to just start pulling stuff when we really don't know how it, how it works, how people are using it in class, how it's integrated. So anything that's on our site, we, we've either used firsthand or it's a, a situation where a teacher has written to us about what they've done to share their experience. Okay? All right, what we got now? Atlas, right, this one's called Track, track Lives. How, how about coding in schools? Anybody familiar with code.org or Hour of Code? Right on. Okay, so we're going to just be real brief on this one. But this one ties augmented reality and coding. This is by, I don't even know how to say it because their app name is different than their company name. We call it Track Labs. It's, it's, it's called by Atlas. Atlas. Um, what this is, is this is a robot that you can actually code every joint. Okay, we're not language coding. We're simply telling it what to do. We're going to pick that joint. We're going to move it. We're going to record the movements. And then we can play all the sequences later. It is so funny because I wrote an article about doing this in centers. I was in my class uh, a couple years ago, and I was realizing I had so many augmented reality things that I hadn't been doing with my kids. I said, you know what, we're going to do centers. We're going to do, we're going to do stations. Okay, so all my kids, I had all kinds of these AR experiences. So I had half my kids do experience, half my kids writing. Okay, so I said, all right, here's an experience, guys. How should we and how can we use this in our classroom? They blew me away. Of course, they had some of the best ideas. One of the coolest things that happened was I had this girl in my class. Because in my class, every morning for the first 15 minutes, we did something. We used so half analog, half digital. So what we <laughs> I love it. So I had a girl in my class saying, when are we going to use Track Labs? And she was really consistent on me. So we started using it. It was great. It became one of our routines. So 
This is great because it combines coding, which is very powerful and very popular, with augmented reality. So you get the engagement factor, plus you get the creation ability. We'll keep freezing a little bit up here. So it's okay. It is kind of cold. I'm getting a little warmed up. Um, so what's Nope, no, this free. is free, but it's not super easy to find it. We, we should probably provide a link for it. Um, are we going to provide materials after? Yes. Okay, so, so actually, so is it going to be on I like how he asked me, are we going to do that? Well, you know what, Drew, is that possible? Drew does that. You know, he, he puts it, you know, he attaches everything possible? and, you know, checks all the right boxes, you know, so. But, uh, so we'll put that on so you can I'm going to leave it. this up real quick because I want to just talk about a couple apps we're not going to show. Good idea. We worked at a school that was a, had a DHH program, deaf and hard of hearing. Okay, so a lot of times these students will be mainstreamed into the classroom, or they would attend specials, things like that, with our classes. Well, it was very difficult. They'd come with an interpreter, interpreter, but you know the kids, it's different, you know, because they're talking to the interpreter who has to talk to the child. So to teach them some simple sign language basics, basic words, things like that. Magic camera it comes with flashcards, a ton of flashcards that you can pr that you can use that teach sign language. Okay, we started using this a little bit, and it was amazing to see that those ch children's reactions when the other kids started signing to them. Okay, so that's pretty powerful. Why don't you uh, just PBS the Kids has a couple of them. Awesome. Shape Quest, which is a great uh, geometry app. Yep. Pretty cool, and then Fetch Lunch Rush which is awesome. you work in teams to solve math problems, for, and it times you. And you compete against each other on who can solve them quicker. Yeah, so, okay, so PBS has two augmented reality apps, and they're excellent. One is called Fetch Lunch Rush. Now, there is another Lunch Rush in the App Store where you're running a restaurant, and you have to do the cash register and all that stuff. That's not it. It's Fetch, F-E-T-C-H, with an exclamation point. It's Ruff Ruffman. It's Ruff Ruffman from a popular cartoon show that they have. What you're doing on that one, we'll briefly just talk about it. You're, it has a great story, so kids get immediate buy-in. You're working on a movie set with Ruff Ruffman, and it's lunchtime. So the kids now have to go get lunch for all the actors. They have to go collect sushi. So they have to solve math problems to go get sushi. So they, they, a math problem comes up, says, what's 10 minus 5? The kid says, oh, that's 5. They go find the target that says 5. They scan it, 5 pieces of sushi come up. Then they tap it, and it collects the sushi, puts it on a plate, and it calculates how long it took for them to do it. Now, I've done it. It's fun with adults. It's fun with kids. It's absolutely really cool. Now, it's, it's only addition subtraction, so it's maybe kindergarten three, maybe four. It ramps up a little bit. And then ShapeQuest is the other one by PBS Kids. It's about geometry. It is so cool because it actually took, in my opinion, I said took it to the next level, because it was the first time I had seen that you had to manipulate your device to make it work, to solve problems. You have to repair bridges with geometrical shapes and you know, have quizzes and stuff. It's kind of cool. So check those out. The next one we're going to show is Anatomy 4D is what it's called. And this was created for the University of Illinois Medical School. And they wanted an app to where their students could practice learning about the um, anatomy without actually having a human body there, right? So they created this. And just, awesome. just to let you know, right here, the dial on the right, those two arrows, that turns up and down the skin tone. Turn it up just a little so you can understand what we're talking about. I think they get it. Well, I'll tell you, the kids may. I find think Brad that, just so. wants me to turn it up. I don't. Think. Brad giggles every time we do this. I do not. Okay. So, yeah. so if you're showing this, just a heads up, it's for a medical school. It's pretty, pretty accurate. accurate. <laughs> we'll just say that. Let's say okay? that. Male right. and female. They're both there. She, she wrote that down. <laughs> right there. I'm going to write that down. So Drew's going to activate a little a dial, a wheel down here at the bottom. You see, he's going to start spinning it. What he's doing now is you're able to turn on and off body systems. Here's what's really awesome. We talked about the one target for multiple kids. One target. Tommy's working on skeletal. Susie's working on muscular. Jimmy's working on circulatory. Ah. They can all be working on different ones. Look, Drew can actually go through and do a flyby inside the human body. So you can see now he's looking at the circulatory system. He's got the skeletal system. I don't even know what other systems he's got in there. So he's turning them on and off right now. As you see, he's deleting now. You can go see how the circulatory system goes in with the skeletal, skeletal system. Look at that. Go to the head. Pretty wild. Now. But the this thing, this ahead. app is free. 
And the targets are right inside the app. If you hit these three lines at the top, target library, and then you can save them right to your camera roll and then print them out. Okay? And it comes with two targets, the whole human anatomy and then the human heart. Yes, the human heart was built after this because it was such a success. They said, let's do the human heart. Let's work on organs. This is absolutely amazing. Get your cameras out if you want to see this. So again, same type of concept to where I can go and use the wheel to isolate different parts. You'll see the red and the blue. That is the blood flow through the heart. Okay. So as I isolate, as you can see, I can actually go inside the heart. Look at the blood flow. You got the blood coming in out, and you can see the valve. I love this shot. Drew, can you get the valves opening up right there? Look at that. It's opening and closing. You know what? I thought I knew what the heart looked like. I mean, I knew it wasn't like a valentine. I had moved past that, OK? But I really did not know, really, to what extent this looked like. But now, look at that. Now, here's something that's really amazing. You know, with Fitbits and all your bio rhythm things that you can get now for your wrist and watches and stuff? You can now connect this via Bluetooth and Think it'll about start feeding that. your heartbeat. Yes. Think about that. So if you work running. out, okay, or if you're at the doctor and you have an irregular heartbeat, something like that, okay, think he can tell you about that, but if he puts your heart on the table and it's not beating right, I think you're going to pay attention. Yeah, right? If you come back from a workout and your heart rate is up, dup, 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 dup. It's incredible. OK, now look. Now think about this. This is not only impacting us. This is not only impacting students. It's impacting us as patients. It's impacting the medical community. It's impacting our doctors. I want a doctor to be able to bring my heart up and say, show me what's going on. Show me. Remove this valve and say, look, this is what not working. This is what is, isn't working correctly. I don't want him to tell me that. No, actually, no, we don't. We don't want him to tell me that. But if I see it, I'm probably going to change my diet, or I'm going to probably start running a little more, if that's something my doctor tells me. And we actually had someone tweet us and be like, hey, where can I get a larger target for that? Because my niece had just had heart surgery, but her parents are having a hard time explaining to her and explaining to family members what exactly happened or where they operated on. So we sent them a poster of this. And they actually took this to the doctor, and the doctor pulled it up and was actually able to isolate where the surgery was. And then the parents were able to explain it to their daughter and then explain it to family members. How cool is that, right? All right, what we got next? Uh, we didn't do this yet. We didn't do this yet. We didn't do this yet, right? We didn't do this. We have at least five that I can I had a system going over here. Why don't you go uh, over there and talk again? You know, he asked me to get the system ready early, and he totally like went out of order. That was, that was one thing I said, let's do it now. Uh, OK, so what's, what are you doing now? We're going to go ahead and do Blueprint? Yes. Blueprint. All right, so we were challenged by a school we were working with in Cambridge, England. We were working with a, a, a big school for two days. The first day, we showed them all of this cool stuff. And we were working with the director the next night. They said, tomorrow, you're going to be working with the high school students. Not only we want them to see us, how is it going to impact them in the future and their jobs, whether jobs they're going into or as consumers? And this is one of the things we showed them. This is a blueprint, and it's not connected. I know that. Oh, OK. All right. So just making sure. So we have a blueprint here. And looking at a bl blueprint, I'm not an architect. I'm not a designer, not an interior designer. I'm not a CAD person. I don't know what this looks like. But now, if, as it comes up, Drew's getting here. Great elevator music. Good old 40s music. All right, Again, so go ahead. With this blueprint, I'm a visual person. I can look at that blueprint, I don't get it. My fiance, she's an interior designer. She sees this, she spent 20 grand, right? She knows what couch to buy, she knows everything. I don't get it, I need to see it. So with this, I can pull up a 3D model of the house, like that. But there's lots of things that where you can put a 3D model of a house on top of a blueprint. But what makes this different is the buttons over here on the left-hand side. Okay. So if I touch floor one, there he's gonna go to the first floor right here. Now he's getting all kinds of options about interior. Okay. But interior. you know what? I live in Florida. I'd rather have a pool. Who wants a who wants a yard? Oh, missed it. Oh, he, the construction guy missed the yard. 
Good. Now we have a pool, which is great. But wait, Drew, what if I got to get downtown real quick? What can I do? Easy. Oh, let's get a spaceship. <laughs> right? That's awesome. That's the new Uber, guys. That's the space Uber. It's coming. So now what he's doing, he's going to actually throw furniture inside here. He can bring couches, chairs. Not only can he bring it in, he's going to landscape here outside. He's going to put some trees around the property. Now, he can put furniture in. He can change the color. He can change the shape. He can change the orientation. If he wants to put it against a wall, he can put it against a wall. All kinds of amazing things. And again, you go floor by floor. Drew, can we put a pool on the roof? Is it possible? Oh, it is. Is it? I'd like to see. You guys want to see a pool on the roof? Yeah, right on. Somebody's with me over here. A pool and a spaceport. I love it. How awesome is that? I thought that was only in LA, but it's here in Florida too. Yes, we got a question here. Um, it's more about what you think. Yes. You know, we, we've had that. There's some, there's some carts that you can get. I've seen, actually, I've seen a lot of maker people make them. You know, the, the food carts, you know, that have the, the racks. People have put those food carts because it has like a little steel grid system. You can lay the iPad right over top of it. And people have done that more for like, you know, how we use the overhead projectors and the whiteboards. I'm dating myself. You know, now this is the next, this is the next variation of it. You know, putting an iPad over it. You can buy some. They're a little expensive, but you can make them pretty cheap. If you YouTube it, you'll find it. So, yes. There's two, you know what? There's two vendors here in the hall that have it. Swivel and Belcom. Shout out to them and say you heard it here. But you can go check that out. Great question. Exactly. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You got to do it on white. You got to see shadows. All right. So you got to see this. This is really cool. This is a space coaster. And let's see. That's oh, not wrong it. One. It took the wrong target. <laughs> he, he pulled it away. It took scanned, the one over here. He scanned a cell. So you know, there, are some, there are some pretty cool space ones out there. We showed you the AR space from kids. And if we get this one to fire up, we'll show you something unique about this one. Uh, Daiquiri was, well, let's get it up. We'll show. Oh. Uh, Daiquiri was working on this. They were trying a new technology, and they're trying to use the actuators inside of a device to enhance an experience. So is it coming up? Yep. Looks like it. All right, coming. so what's going to come up? He's going to show you. We're going to have the solar system come up. Okay. But and a lot of these are created with an online platform, and they're cloud-based. Okay. So when you do fire these up, you do need internet. But once it fires the first time, and it loads that first time, then you're good, and it fires automatically. And we're competing with like 200 people right now, so it's coming up. The internet um, is lagging. So, but the cool thing is, is when he brings this up, you're going to get the experience. It's going to be kind of what you're imagining from what you've seen so far of the solar system and such. But you're going to see some interesting things about like a flyby and our proximity to the target. So let's see here. Here we go. Taking off the space. We're now an observer in the solar system. He's going to back up. So check this out. We can go all the way back here. We have a spiral galaxy, guys. We're way out in space. Now, as Drew gets closer to the target, it changes. It's using its proximity to give the user a different experience. He's going from spiral galaxy to solar system to the Earth and the moon. Now what he's doing, Drew, why don't you explain what you're doing physically with the iPad right now? So what it does, it gives you the ability if I just touch with my thumb or any finger on the screen and hold it there, then I can actually zoom into it. So that way the proximity isn't changing my experience, but I can go in and explore Look at that. further. Shadows of the asteroids. Drew, go in and find the Earth. Look at that. We have the moon orbiting the Earth right there. You see the shadow? Yeah. How many of you like to have done that when you were a kid? Yeah? How many of you know kids that would like to see this? Yeah, exactly. And you said, this, if this is something that works for you, you have them. You have that engagement. It's Daiquiri. And we're going to, you, you can't get that target, but we're going to give a bunch of these. We got like 10 of them up here. We're going to give away at the end. You can get the target. It just, it doesn't have its own app. A lot of the stuff we, we just, we steal and take and say, this wasn't designed to be used in education. This was designed inside the company to see if they could do something with proximity. And we said, oh, bring it. That's cool. We'll take it. Okay. So the thing is, is like, we tweet out images. Freezing, you can probably freezing. do a Google search on images and find these. We actually have a bunch of the coasters to give away today. You feel free to stay after and take pictures. Any of the targets we have, take a picture with your camera. You can go device to device. So you take a picture on your iPad, do it with your camera, scan it, it'll work. 
Save it your camera roll, print it off, whatever. You, you're free to do that. Yes? No. No, and no. the reason for that is these devices, they don't see in color. Right. They only see in black and white. So a device instantly moves it to grayscale, so it's okay. And this here is an app called Care 4D. Okay. Oh, Care crazy. is actually down there, and you can get one of these postcards. They have a ton of them there. And this is one company that's not only creating augmented reality experiences and labs, but the content that goes with it. Okay? Did you hear that? The content that goes with it. This is absolutely amazing. Right now we see a science lab. We're talking about how metals react in liquids. What Drew has, he just grabbed a penny and put it in. Drew, is that water or is that acid? I can't tell. I think this is water. I think that's water. So you have a test, you know, you have a sample. So he's putting a penny in water. Yes. Care. Care. C A R E. C period A period R period E. You can see it like right in the middle, under, right below the beaker there. Yeah. But you, the great thing about this is, one, if you are working with acids or anything like that, instead, I don't have this safety issue now, right? I can do it right here in 4D. How many times have you done a science lab and you're doing something like this, and by second hour, the penny's gone, zinc's gone, silver, and I only have iron left. Next thing you know, you're shifting through the coverage, you're trying to find backups, mm -hmm. right? And by sixth hour, you have nothing. And the thing now, is, is, I have it all, every time. And the thing is, it's like, so we can only, well, if we're using raw materials, we really only have basically like one shot per lab to do that or get it right. We can't take the penny back out of the acid and do it again. We don't have that luxury. Well, we have the luxury now. Now, also, we actually were interviewing kids and asked them about this. We, we've been, we were working with Winter Park, actually, local here, to do this lab. And we asked them, we said, all right, now look, can you, t like, if you're doing the traditional lab, is your teacher going to send those materials home with you if you want to do it? There's no way. But now the teachers can send the target home, and the kids can practice the lab. Maybe there's a kid who needed a little more time with it, or there's a kid who was absent. Oh, that's okay, Susie. You didn't miss the lab. I'll give you the target. You can do it, you know, during fourth hour. You can do it at home when you have time. Okay, you eliminate a lot of safety issues. You eliminate, you know, the fact that you only have like one time to do it. They can do it multiple, multiple, multiple times. It's really cool because you pick these seats up, you drop them. I mean, you saw the bubbles from the acid. It's pretty realistic. You shake the target, the water in the beaker moves. We're getting there. We're getting that realistic. It's pretty amazing. What else do we have, Drew? Next, oh. we're going to move to Elements 4D. And Elements 4D was a Kickstarter campaign. How many of you heard of Elements 4D? Awesome. Okay, and what it is is th these right here are the blocks that will be available very soon. Okay, they're wood blocks, and on each side of the wooden block is a different element from the periodic table. Okay, so what I can do is I can then scan that element, and this block turns into that element. Okay, you can get information about it. I'm gonna not stop telling you about it and actually show it to you though. Yeah, I do have a question. How many of you remember the periodic table poster when you were in chemistry class? Guess what? Not a lot has changed. That was accurate for about 70 years. Now just think. They would know 70 years ago. 70 that they years, still had those I was posters. in third grade. No. So now you can pull these elements off the periodic table and put them in your hand. Put them on the table. He just scanned gold. Look at that. He's now picking up a hunk Oop, of gold. It. He now has it interactive in his hand. Not only is he holding the sample, it gives him information about it. And we'll see some really cool stuff. Why don't you talk through what you're doing, Drew? So now I bring in a second cube. That's chlorine. chlorine. So now I have a solid and I have a gas, and by simply just touching the blocks together, it gives me the chemical reaction. Gold chloride. Who knew, right? From what chemistry teachers tell me, that's not a real stable reaction, but it is a reaction. So what are you going to do next, Drew? Right? Yeah, you don't have a lot of yeah, gold. Yeah, you don't have a lot of gold. Lab. But exactly. that, was, that was the other thing that we were just talking about before with the safety, right? Things like mercury. You shouldn't have mercury anymore I know, in your classroom. Somebody in the back. Okay. Every, How many people have mercury hidden in a closet yes, somewhere? Exactly, yes, exactly. We, we got to exactly. admit, admit. We that. say we 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 learn real quick. We say, well, you can't have mercury in school. Every time a teacher goes, well, I've got some in my closet. I'm like, all right, okay. So you shouldn't have it, but some of you do. But this is so. This is water he did right here. You can see the chemical reaction. We have the equation down here below. So there's a lot of great ways to do this. Discovery, learning, you can give kids. Here's one of the cool things. We worked with some teachers around the, around the country. 
to make lesson plans. And these lesson plans are free and available. There are two upper elementary lesson plans, two middle school and two high school plans. And they're very, very good. So now it's not all up to you to get started. Now you can like, all right, well, I get the blocks. And these are free, by the way. You can print them out. You can Who, likes free? Print them out. Who, Who likes, likes free? Who likes free? I love free. Yeah. Right? You can get this right now and do it free. You can print them off. Now you don't have to fold them and cut them and stuff. I've seen creative people put them on blocks. I've seen people just keep them empty, whatever. You can buy them if you want in a few weeks because the teachers supported the Kickstarter campaign, which was, which was awesome. So give it up to us, guys. Right on, right on. Well done. Well and just done. to give you an idea of how in-depth these lesson plans are, the elementary one is 91 pages. Now, okay, that is including flashcards. That's yes. including all of the materials that go with it. But that just tells you how hard these teachers work to create in-depth lesson plans that are free. Because these are And they're on elements4d.dacry.com. And we'll tweet the link out and we'll share that as well. <laughs> right. That's, we've, we've asked, we've had a bunch Good of question. focus groups. We've interviewed a lot of teachers, said, what would you like to see? One was like, we want to see the reaction. If there's an explosion, you want, you want to smell the sulfur, right? That, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so like you, they, said, they said three cubes. They want to see the reaction. If it's an explosion, they want to see the explosion. Of course, I think that would be kind of cool. I'd like to see the explosion. Yes, back here. The web again? The Daiquiri web address? Elements for, yeah, right. Yep, elements 4 D. Dot daiquiri dot com. Elements 4D dot daiquiri dot com. All right, we, the next one we we're going to show you. We have a couple you. more to demo, then yep. we've got to give swag away. Who wants, who wants some swag? Who wants some stuff, right? Yeah, right on. Okay. I can't wait to throw cubes. That's fun. Not the so wooden ones. Not, what we're going to show you next is called Enchantium. It's the element of play. Okay? But the way that we use this in education is the creative part. So we've had teachers, they, there's three different coasters here, right? Fired up, let's see what this is. Okay, like. who loves laser beams? Laser beams, right? Love who it. does not like laser beams, right? But when I touch the coaster, it changes the color of the laser beam. And this, by the way, is called musical strings. So what do you think is going to happen when you touch the laser beam? That would be cool if that was it, but when I strum it, I can actually... Yeah, how cool is that, right? We've had science teachers use this for wavelength, yep. like frequency, things like that. Okay, Music, create your own music. This is called it's Enchantium. En Enchantium, and we'll, we'll, it's E-N-C-H-A-N-T-I-U-M. Enchantium is the... If you do a search on Daiquiri in the App Store or Google Play, you'll get Enchantium as one of the ones that will come up. It's whenever Daiquiri creates something that they consider playful, they put it in there. It was just one thing, then it was two, now there's three, and we're going to show you at least two of them. Uh, they're just the element of play. And the other one is... You know, rock 'em, sock 'em robots. Remember that? I remember that. It's like that in 4D. We usually demo that one, but I'm Brad beats me every time in that game. It's it's ridiculous. I don't. I yeah. I think I'm like I've won like four times in, out of 40 matches. So I yeah. I said we'll, we'll show some. He other started. Ones. He he stopped playing. He was like, we're not demoing that anymore. I'm like, all right. So, but yeah. So now now this is the the screen's yeah, right. gone. Okay, I, there it is. I know. Okay. <laughs> hey, just making sure he's aware. This one is called Fairy Tale, and I'll let Drew get into it. But uh, you know what? It's already fired up. I want, I want you to kind so of. So when I scan it. the image, it says tap to start. So now I'm not just getting experience, but you get fairy dust. And what this is actually doing is it's reading the environment, and it's building the experience based on the environment around it. Okay? We're going to get these a little closer. You can see I have three towers of cubes here that have turned blue. And it's used those to create my story. So one has turned into a house. Right there. The other yeah. one has turned into, and the other two have turned into trees. Now this, okay. will, this will change based on every time it reads. We actually, when we were in Cambridge, we actually had, I, ha, I tweeted out this picture. I was standing right here. There were two teachers, both with iPads, look at the exact same setup. They had two, two different situations. Two different screens and set up. So you can then select different things like grass, moss, rocks, and build the experience right in the environment. As you How can many see. are aware of Minecraft? Right? Minecraft. This is Minecraft meets augmented reality. 
Now you got those kids that like to build and design. They can actually build and design inside of a live experience. He did cobblestone, he did grass. Oh, he's looking for all kinds of cool stuff. This magic pouch came out. No. No, that's no. a good question. good question. She said we have to have the cubes. No, we just objects. We've done water bottles, staplers, uh, tape dispensers, things that are at school, on a desk, rulers, you name it. Thank you. So when you touch the magical pouch, <laughs> that's Drew when he woke up this morning. That is kind of how I felt. So now what I can do is I can make the bear actually move around just by touching certain locations. Directors of their own okay. learning now. They're now Ooh. controlling this, building and designing inside of an experience. Boom! Okay, so you can have up to four different objects here. Things like water bottles don't work well because it kind of sees right through it because it's a clear. Big label it Pop bottles, things like that, boxes that are detailed, they work real well. Okay, so you can have up to four different objects around it to build the experience. Okay? How many thought that was pretty cool? Yeah, there we go. That, oh, I wish we had a picture of that. That was really cool. We'll stage that again later. No, that was really cool. Um, and then I think this is probably the last thing we're going to demo before yes. we get to. All right, this is brand new. This is from Crayola. How many of you are familiar with Crayola? Crayola has jumped in feet first with the augmented reality experience. Uh, this is Color Alive. And this has a really cool feature. We're going to show you the experience. But then we're going to do something as a group. We're going to take a selfie, which is great. We did this and tweeted Crayola, and they loved it. This will be our largest crowd that we've had since. It's only been out, what, a week, two weeks? Uh, about a week or two. The coloring books are available in most Target, Meyer, Joanne Fabric, all types of stores like that. Um, Toys R Us, I believe, around here has yep. them, right? Yep. Okay. And there are four different coloring books. Oh, we're frozen. You're on, you're on something. So we have Barbie. We have Enchanted Forest with different fairies and um, characters like that. Skylanders. And we have Myth Mythical Creatures, creatures. which mythical is pretty creatures. cool. So this is, we had somebody in our audience today. Who colored this one? Who colored this one? Thank yes. you. Right back here. Let's give her a Let's round of applause. Let's give her a round of applause, right? Woo! All right. Thank you. So check this out. Drew, why don't you talk through what you're doing? So when I scan it, I hit the 40 button. You hit that 40 And then button. whatever color, this I what color it. Colored. Oh, we have a, oh, how cute is that? The little ladybug came in. So cute. Aww. Then what you can do, you can take pictures with it, things like that. You can save it if you want to for later. Yep, there's some cool features here. Save it, you save the experience. Things like that. She's gone. She said, I don't like Ooh, Drew. There she is. And then we had one more that... Who colored this one? Number. Right here, Woo! give her a round of applause. Woo! All right, right on. All right, turtle with the castle on the back. Very cool. Whoa, whoa, oh, great. careful, Drew. Don't drive the turtle away. <laughs> Drew did the audio for that. So now he's clicking on these, he's clicking on these. Oh, look at that. <laughs> ah, he <laughs> got scared. He's back out. Put away in the chest for later. Okay. But a cool feature is once you save them. This is cool. Oh, I exit out of the app. If you, if you don't exit out the app, you can do something really cool. <laughs> you, you save the experience, almost like you're saving something to your camera roll. What time is it? And this is really cool. We got like five minutes, right? Five minutes. We're, we're almost there. I'm Last working thing on it. We're, we're going to rock the giveaways, hopefully. You can go to your save stuff and then click on it. And now I don't need the target, but I can place it anywhere I want. Okay. Not, not frozen. frozen. Come on. Come on. I think it's your dongle. I didn't say that. You lock it up. Yes. You can do you both. You can buy them the inside the was, app. You can, buy the, you can buy the actual coloring books, but you there can are also download the app. There are free ones in the app. Once you're in the app, you can print the pages over and over and over. So if you're actually looking to use the pages more, you can do the in-app purchase. If you actually want these for a gift or a, a physical experience, you can buy the books. All right, so he's going to bring out his saved stuff. Now we're live. Now we're, we're on the screen here. If it doesn't freeze here again. It did. It did. It's not the app. It's working no, it's, on here. It's the hookup. Yeah, it's the dongles. We've been getting it every workshop we're doing. So <laughs> yeah. now typically freezing the experience. 
You'd have to try for yourself, but that's that's what we've experienced. We gotta get this fired up so we can take a selfie. Yeah, we gotta get a selfie. We did one. Who was in a selfie with us in this the other day? We have one back. We have a couple already. That was cool. Do you want to get this fired up while I bring up the raffle yeah. to the giveaway stuff? Yeah, you're gonna do the we raffles. We're almost done. All right, Drew's gonna. I'm gonna get this fired up. Drew's gonna get the raffle stuff going. No. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should do it the old-fashioned way. Yeah. I think we should. We got a lot you know of what? stuff. How many of you didn't get a chance to get on? Oh, I got it. it didn't work. I tweeted. Does that count? Wow, that was kind of cool. Well, we'll we'll do we'll give some things away for the people that were able to enter. We'll give some things away for that, but then we'll we can do some old-fashioned too. Okay. So we're up. So what we're gonna do now? Oh. So if you turn the camera around. Oh. oh, come on. I'm not touching it. I think maybe it's me. I think it is Drew. Okay, so we're until this is up, what we'll do is we'll do the old-fashioned way. Okay? Warning. Oh, here we, we are going to throw these. Oh, oh, yeah, here we go. We'll do a couple. We'll do this side of the room first. Whoops. Selfie on this side of the room first. Brad, do you need help taking a selfie? I, I'm usually pretty good at this, but. Everybody smile. Oh, we gotta do another one. Wave, everybody wave. There we go, awesome. We wanna do the other side? We said the other side. All right, so. This side, is it this side? No, that side, you just did. Oh, this, this side. side. This side, wave, whoa! Good, he got there it. There we go. We got it. Okay. All right. We are going to throw these to the winners. Yes. We have hit people before. Drew so, has. I've done much better, but today that might is, be a That first. is true. So just a heads up. We want to know who traveled the farthest to get here. All right. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Here's okay. Some. Okay. One, no, no. 100 miles. Keep your hands up. 100 miles or more. 200 or more. 500 or more. A thousand miles or more. Out of country. Canada. Where? Another country. What country? Jamaica? Jamaica. Dominican Republic. Who's far? Anybody? North, outside of North America. Chile? Chile. Anybody farther than Chile? Yeah, I'm, I'm Chile too. Chile the country, right? All right, we'll start there. All right, ready? This is, all right, you got to fire this up with Dak. This one's, okay, somebody around her help. Here we go. Ready? Uh, right on the money! Woo! Hey, live up to that, Drew. Let's yeah, see. Yeah, thanks. Mine will be in the back corner, probably. All right, you got one to fire up here? I'm working on it. The internet is just okay. not working. All right, longest teaching. We'll do short, too, but longest teaching. 20 years or more, 25 or more, 30 or more, 35 or more, 40, how many, 44, 43, 42, let's give them all a round of applause, hey. yeah, right on, right hey. over here, we're going to go 40, they should all get one, that's all, all they all get one, all, right, all that's three impressive. of you get one, well, here's one for wait, you, wait, how many for you? Woo! Oh, here we go. Four. Ready? Right. Are you ready? Drew's going there. We'll get yours. Yeah. All right, All right. we're right here. And then we got one, one more. One more right there. All right. <laughs> okay, you got something in the giveaway? I'm trying. All right, Internet's okay. Working. Are there any pre student teachers here? Any teachers still in school? All right, first year teacher. First year, we have one, two, three. Let's get up for first year teacher. Woo! All three of you, come up here. All three of you, come up and get something. Aaron Smith. Aaron Smith. Woo! Aaron, you ready? All right, Drew's going to throw something. Where'd she go? That's for oh. you. You're welcome. That's for you. Oh, uh, did you catch it? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. All right, what's, who's next? Come on, give me somebody. I like it. She's fired up. Right on. Uh, Juki? J-U-K-I? Right there? Is that right? Did we, Juki? All right. Which, you white ready? Or black? White or black? Ready? 
Which one? We're gonna let her choose. Which one you want? Yeah, right on. Woo! Let's give it up for Juki. Yeah. All right, ready? Oh, it's a little short. Oh, I hit somebody, Drew. Nobody tweet that. I didn't hit anybody. You didn't see a thing here. Kathy so, Brosh. Kathy Brosh, right there. Woo! Right on. All right. We got one more, and then we're going to give away the coloring books. Coloring books. Donna Hall. Donna. Oh, that's oh, a come Oh, on. Drew, you got your work cut out. Look at that. Ready? Let's go, Donna. Shoot oh, the wall! Oh, he's going to hit somebody. Oh, no. You hit the wall. It's crazy. I was, I was right, a wrestler. On. Give me this one. We're going to do coloring books. No, we'll do one more cube. Okay, we'll do the coloring books. Guys. Brandon Hazard. Brandon, coloring book. Come on Sunday up and coloring pick book. one. All right, who else? Ian Belanger. Ian, right over here. All right, Ian, come on up. Danny Patterson. Danny, right here. Woo! Last coloring book. Another coloring book. Laura Jerka. Laura? Juka. Is that right? Happy, happy present to win. All right, next. No, she was, the, she was Danny. Tracy Tobin. Tracy, come on up. Right on. Okay, we also have cubes and we have some coasters and a chantium. Dolly what would you like me to Lama. Fake name Wells. <laughs> Donnie fake yeah, name maybe. Wells. Barbie? <laughs> Dot, no? That was sad? Dolly fake Dolly name fake, Wells. No, no fake name in here? All right, who's next? Payowell.com. That was crazy. Billy Wang. Billy Wang, come on up. You get a chantium pack. Come on up. Steve Waterman. Steve Waterman. Steve. Oh, Steve. Oh, he, oh, he just left. Next person. There you go. You're welcome. Liza. Liza. Liza Joe. Manelli. I thought I was going to say that. No? President Liza to win. Lucy Tr Trahan. 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 Spacer and Chantium, your choice. Enchantium. Susan. There you go. Ugh. Really? Maybe P. I should look. Pro yes. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous, fabulous. Let's give it up for fabulous. Right on. She's probably heard that before. Lindsay Stutzman. Lindsay, woo, come on up. Who's next? Lindsay, you want a cube? Oh, cube. Who wants to throw you a cube? Cube. All right, and we have a total. What? We have four space. Kevin Fess. Kevin, right here. You get space? I could try to throw this. <laughs> oh, look at that. Howie Doe. Here you go, Drew. Try that. Uh, yeah, I'll try that. She's right back there. I'm not throwing that back there. Who's next? John Sawash. John Sawash, right here. He's a Michigan native. Let's give it to him. Woo! Woo! Well Beth done. Bess. Who? Lionel, right on. Woo, yummy. Kathy Parker Jones. Oh, I, oh, I got somebody hit. I'm Kathy so Parker sorry. Jones, right here, Brad. I'm sorry. What? Kathy. Kathy, right here. You're welcome. Charla Groves. Woo! Charlie, there you go. And Julie Kimsey. Julie, <laughs> hear the back. Do we have anything else, Drew? We've got the coasters over here. Three more? Michelle Elliott. You're welcome. Michelle? No? Ilana. Michelle, From Palm right Beach State, EDU. Gone. Got to be present to win. Wendy Thomas. Wendy, hey, right Wendy! Here? What do you have? A white cube? You got one more space and one more Sherry cube. Sherry G? Sherry? Right there? Space? Cube, cube, Drew, you gotta throw the cube. There you go. We have one more. There we go. One more. Oh, we have a space and a black cube. Two, two more. Jason Rushing. Jason, he black can get cube. an enchantium pack, really. Oh, cube. <laughs> there you go, right on. Do we have anything else? Do you have another chance here? We're gone. Jeff right. Yates. Jeff, this is the last one. Donna West. Donna, all right. Hey, yeah, hey Donna. Thank you for Thank joining you guys. us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming.